Hello and welcome to another episode of The Code of Career with me, Cameron Blackwood. Today's guest is Shola Quadri. Shola's had an amazing decade. He started off as a marketing professional before embarking on a music career that saw him travel across the world before retiring from that and now becoming a software engineer. Shola's episode will be particularly interesting for those of you who are currently learning to code because Shola himself has only learned to code in the past year. That means his advice is going to be super up to date and really useful. If you want to stay in touch with myself and guests and other listeners of The Coder Career, please do join our Discord. The link is in the description and of course it's completely free. I hope you enjoy today's show. Hi Shola, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing well Cameron, yourself? Yeah, not bad. Thanks, not bad. Uh, getting getting chilly, as as is a common theme on the podcast. It's often getting chilly. We're recording this in the run up to Christmas, though, so yeah. uh, got that to uh, got that to look forward to. I, I, I always I always get a little bit confused when like people say not bad, and I wonder like, are you really not bad, or is that not bad as in you're good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the British thing. Like you know, yeah, no one ever wants no, to say like, yeah. It's a thing in Ireland as well. But I just like to like. Pull people's legs about it like not bad are you you're not bad are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know what you mean yeah um and uh, so for listeners who haven't come across you before do you want to like just say say a little bit about uh, what you're all about what you're doing at the moment and what you've been doing because you, you have a very interesting career story actually yes um so uh, yeah my name is shola um, what I'm about. So I, I, I grew up in Dublin, uh, first and foremost. And then like in terms of like career, um, yeah, it's been a bit of a mix and match. So like my background, academically speaking, is in uh, business and marketing. And I worked a little bit in that as well, uh, more specifically with like tech startups. Um, and then shortly after like graduating like my, from my master's in 20. Uh, 13 2014 um, I embarked on a music career so there's uh, a part of me as well like that's uh, a a creative so to speak and uh, things just kind of like blew up while I was in college and then you know instead of going down the uh, traditional route of you know uh, um, you know a grown-up career so to speak um, (laughs) like my music uh, started gaining traction and blew up and and that kind of took me around the world uh, where I was fortunate uh, to do a lot of great things uh, while I was at it. Um, and then, yeah, lo and behold, some years after, like, you know, I have to get, like, you know, getting that out of my system uh, and, like, some other stuff in the background as well, like, because there's a lot of things that goes on in the background that people don't see. People only tend to see, uh, like you know, if you're an artist, or if you're someone who's relatively doing something that's in in uh, in the public eye, uh, there's people only see what's going on uh, on the outside. Like, yeah, yeah, people only see what's going on, you know, in front of the cameras, but they don't see what's going on behind the scenes. And there's a lot of stress that comes with that, and so on and so forth. But anyways, um, yeah, went through that and went through you know my share of like severe burnout and so on and so forth, and then retreated back. And then went back into the world of marketing, uh, where I worked as a uh, consultant uh, for some companies, um, just like, you know, fixing the marketing up and so on and so forth. And then, yeah, I then decided just like around when COVID hit us that, okay, I was going to dive in uh, into tech, which is something that had been on my mind for quite a while. So I've been on that journey now for the last year and a half, uh, just like learning how to program and kind of like trying to... Uh, get my feet wet uh, in the ocean of uh, technology or like the tech space, so to speak. So that's where I'm at right now at the moment. Cool. Sounds great. And uh, another way we like to let the audience know you a little bit better is some quick fire questions. So Mm -hmm. uh, those are the ones I sent over to you uh, in in preparation for this podcast. So excited to hear the answers for this one. Uh, So what was your first ever computer? I can't remember like the name or the model of it, but it was a it was a chunky gray Dell laptop that had yeah. one of those like crappy Intel chips. Like when it crashed, <laughs> it, it was gone for days. But I mean, it also it also gave me some good memories. Like I produced my first beats on that, and I wrote a lot mm. of school essays uh, on that as well. What uh, digital audio workstation were you using? I started off with Reason, um, and then oh, cool. later on, I moved to like Logic, which is like my go-to now. Like when I when oh I nice music. yeah Logic Pro X. 
Yeah, I used to use uh, FL Studio, so I used to produce a bit of house music uh, when I was in university, and oh, it nice. went it didn't go that far. I got one track on BBC Introducing, and then that was basically it after that. Oh, nice. um, more or less gave up when I realised I was graduating. Um, I should have taken it further like you did. That that that's cool uh, that yeah. you were able to do it for a few years. Yeah. Um, yeah, FL Studio. Like, I have some friends who make really good sounds in FL Studio, but I, you know, because cause I also studied, like, music technology, um, like, back in the day, and, uh, yeah, there was this kind of, like, snobbery attitude to, like, FL <laughs> Studio. So, yeah. I, there's, there's this part of me, FL, mm, but there's a lot of people making great stuff on FL Studio, mm-hmm. for sure. It used to be kind of a looping, uh, like a looping software Mm. Uh, and you could just make really basic stuff on it. I think the big one, I mean, this is getting well away from tech, but uh, <laughs> the big one that um, I, I always found interesting was, um, do you remember uh, that Soldier Boy song, Crank That, that came out yeah, in like yeah, 2006? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he made that on FL, FL Studio, but yeah. just using... Yeah, just using the demo version. Yeah. He didn't even buy it. Yeah, yeah. And so he had to like restart every half an hour and then he released it like when he was like 16. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy what you can make with that software. Um, yeah, a lot yeah. of people, like a lot of like the hits out there now, uh, nowadays are also, especially in hip hop, actually made mm. in uh, FL Studio. So it's, it's more robust now than what it used to be. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the Code of Career is edited in FL Studio as well. So the listeners can hear exactly what FL Studio sounds like uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a right now. Circle closing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, what's your favorite tech city in the world? Um, I'm, I mean, I, I have some, I've never been, so I, I can't, I'm, I'm going to take it out of the list. Like, but I'd say like San Francisco, just in terms of like things that comes mm. out of it. And like, I have friends working there as well, but in terms of like places that I've been, I would say Dublin, uh, definitely mm. like for such a small city, it's like a lot of great things, uh, come out from here, um, that just like travels globally. And also I like Lisbon, uh, mainly because of the tropical lifestyle it affords, um, <laughs> You know, like you've got the sun and the beach and then you've got tech. It's, it's, yeah, it's heaven. Yeah, L- Lisbon's really emerging. It's funny, We I was talking about this um, with uh, Christian who was on the podcast. He will have been on uh, a couple of couple of episodes before this. Mm-hmm. And we were just agreeing that Lisbon is, that will be the next big European tech city really because uh, we had London, we had Bar- uh, we had um, Berlin, uh, then we had Barcelona. And I think, I think next in line is Lisbon. The startup scene is really cool out there. I agree. I agree. Uh, have you have you been? Because uh, I was actually hoping to go next year, uh, but I haven't actually been. To Lisbon, yet. yes, yes, yes. I've been to Lisbon before. I really, I really love it. I recommend it, especially if you're a fan of seafood. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm a fan of all food, but seafood especially. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's really nice out there, and the people are quite cool as well. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it sounds like a really interesting place, a lot of history and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, really embracing the future. Christian was saying something about um, the best steak he'd ever eaten uh, as well. So I have to try the surf and turf. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, if you're yeah. into surfing as well, they've got some really nice spots out there, uh, like some really uh, good waves to catch uh, out in Lisbon. So, you know, keep yeah. that in mind as well. <clears throat> that sounds cool. And uh, this is an especially relevant question for you. Mm-hmm. What type of music do you like to listen to when you're coding? Uh, grunge, death metal. Like, no, nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> I like a bit of grunge, to be fair, but I don't know if I can do death metal while I'm working. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, my go-to is usually uh, lo-fi hip-hop or oh, no. uh, alte Afrofusion music, which is like a, rel- like a relatively new genre, but it's like mm-hmm. so dope uh and it's just like music coming out of nigeria and and yeah it's uh, i recommend that everyone listens to this like mm. alte afro fusion i was che- i've been checking out a lot of um afro beats and mm-hmm. uh like guys like Wizkid um mm-hmm. from from nigeria and yeah it's been yeah, yeah. Uh, i really i really like it it's just nice upbeat like uh, gets you in a good mood it's kind of yeah. music if you want to get some good work done yeah i mean i mean the, i mean the thing is like with afro beats there's a lot of like different sub genres within that genre mm-hmm. so like alte afro fusion is one of those sub genres within afro beats as well but yeah um yeah, just like Nigeria is, is doing its thing. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty proud of uh, the music coming out of there. Yeah, it's actually my, um, uh, Lagos is actually my pick for the emerging, like, if someone hey, said to hey, me, come hey, on. Tech city. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, and that's where, that's where I'm from. Like, that's where my family comes from. 
Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's really great to hear that. Yeah, and I do have some like uh, friends and friends of friends uh, out there as well, like on, in the scene, like both mm. on the like technical side of things, like the tech side, but also like the venture capital world that's like out there and like the the, the capital that's going into into the industry there. And yeah, there's a lot of great things coming out of there and not just like staying in there, but actually going global as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely one to look out for, for sure. Yeah. Cause all you have to do is like look on Twitter and just see, uh, see the stuff that, uh, particularly the JavaScript community, um, mm-hmm. at Lagos seems to be making some really cool stuff and yeah, yeah uh, like you I say, visit. Like, you should yeah. visit, you should visit. I, I would love to visit. Like I'd just love to go to that, um, go to Lagos. It's definitely on my bucket list. Sounds like an okay. in, incredible place. If you do go, uh, do let me know and I will put you in touch with some people. I'll tell you like where to go and, you know, just to like get some good food or just catch a good <laughs> vibe. And yeah, like Lagos is, Lagos is beautiful chaos. <laughs> nice man yeah so, so, that sounds so cool yeah like i said 100 percent on the bucket list I, I definitely have to go to lagos uh mm-hmm. soon and um what what about when you're working are you would you say you're an early bird or a night owl um to be honest i'm quite indifferent actually uh I, mm. I, I like to keep a balance like not too early not too late um but in the past especially like you know when i was uh more of an active music artist i was definitely more of a night owl just like the yeah. lifestyle that <laughs> that 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 brings along with it yeah i can imagine i guess if you're playing shows and uh, after parties and that kind of thing i guess it's kind of a forced decision you have to become the night owl in that case something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and um when, when you were a kid uh what what job did you want to have was it musician or, or was that something that came on later in life um i <laughs> that, that's a funny question when people ask but yeah like that the most honest answer is that i did not want a job as a kid <laughs> um I, I was too busy being a kid and uh exploring my curiosities and being like confused and fascinated by the world in equal measures um but like having nigerian parents like the dream was for the child to be a lawyer uh mm. accountant or in my case uh, a doctor <laughs> but mm. I knew from the get-go, like, being in a white coat wasn't my thing. Um, I, I was made to create and just, like, make shit happen. Nice. Nice. Mm. Yeah, that's what... Uh, it's, it's, you do get this feeling, like... Um, I used to get this feeling when I was a kid that when I played with Lego and stuff that I could never capture again until mm. I started to code. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you feel like that as well, but, like, when you start clicking stuff together, mm. it unlocks that part of your brain that uh, kind of the adult world beats out of you a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's so it's, yeah, I, I definitely, yeah, I can relate. Um, I, I think I cycled through about 20 different jobs I wanted when I was a kid, um, <laughs> and I didn't realise about really being a software engineer until my sort of early 20s, so... Uh, it's a funny one. Uh, a lot of people don't. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even really think that was a thing, uh, like being a software yeah. engineer uh, as a kid. But um, yeah, it, it is what it is. Uh, we're here now. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's all just magic to you when you're a kid. You don't necessarily think about what's going on under the hood, mm-hmm. um, unless you're one of those like uh, crazy people that starts coding when they're like ten. In which case, I'm very jealous. Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 I'm glad that I did other stuff as well beforehand, as I'm sure you are as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that leads me into um, a question of obviously you went from this is I've had I've interviewed a lot of career changes, but I think mm-hmm. hands down professional worldwide touring musician uh, to software engineer. It's probably one of the most interesting career transitions I've ever heard. How, how did that journey start and what made you choose tech and what was your introduction to it? Yeah, it's funny that we just talked about childhood a little bit, like in your previous question. Um, so like in my childhood, uh, I used to believe uh, cartoons were real, um, like mm-hmm. some sort of alternative universe that I can go into and play. Um, yeah. But my attempt of going inside of the TV, uh, through the back of the TV... <laughs> I mean, I guess like th- th- that was my first awareness of like the front end and back end, uh, even though I couldn't <laughs> put a word to it. But yeah, that never worked out. And then um, later on, like, you know, like playing games, uh, particularly like Nintendo, SNES, um, which I enjoyed mm. playing. But I was curious. I was always curious to know how things worked and how things were put together. Um then fast forward um, in my early teens, I used to go to a... Um, uh, uh, um, like a youth club 
where I met this guy, David, who was like the, the genius archetype of what a software developer was. He, he looked like uh, Neo uh, from the Matrix, <laughs> like with a long coat and he had like, a, a, you know, a long hair and he would wear those dark glasses as well. But he was very antisocial, like he had no social skills whatsoever, but he was genius at what he did. Um, and I, I used to be fascinated just like watching him do just, and this was like way before days of like social media or when everyone, you know, thinks coding or programming is cool. Uh, but anyways, he turned me off as well uh, because of his <laughs> arrogance. Uh, <laughs> um, and then just like fast forward a little bit more, uh, you know, like uh, as a musician, especially like with production, I was always curious as to how things worked in the background of like my uh, doors, like, you know, uh, digital audio workstations, so like Reason and Logic. So yeah, I wanted to play music, but at the same time, I used to think, how did they put this together from a software perspective? Um, and then in, in terms of my first actual experience in coding, I did a diploma in digital media production in 2012. Um, where I got my first taste of like building websites, but just like basic HTML. Um, but I found the experience like very frustrating. And besides, I was so in love with music at that point that I had no time for anything else. Um, and then fast forward again, 2014, 2018, between 2014 and 2018, I had some ideas or like projects in mind, but I couldn't execute even like for the MVPs. Um, and my attempts to like work with people who were technical also was, uh, frustrated me, so to speak. Uh, so that was almost like a wake up call to like follow these sprinkles of imagination. That's been kind of like showing itself, uh, throughout different stages of my life from childhood. Um, and then in terms of like taking things a little bit more serious, uh, when COVID hit, uh, last year, um, when, you know, as you know, we were all forced, uh, to isolate and be at home and, and you know, work from home or, you know, do whatever it is that you do from home. Um, I did some research and like spoke to some friends in the industry, uh, like in the tech industry, I mean, um, and that led me down to the world of Python, which I started like self-learning um, using things like Free Code Camp, uh, Udemy, Treehouse, and so on and so forth. But being in isolation, it was very quick to lose motivation, especially like when you're trying to like learn something new. It was, it was quite mind boggling, so to speak. Um, and then I realized that I needed to be in a community of some sort, like learn with other people. So I then um, looked at uh, the, the various different options that were available to me, um, including like boot caps. And th that's when I came across School of Code. Uh, which is a uh, remote online uh, boot camp uh, based out in Birmingham. And then I just, yeah, just follow through with that. And um, one thing led to the other. And then we enrolled in like a six months uh, boot camp from March of this year uh, until September, where, yeah, we just got to learn like a lot of cool stuff. Um, and not just in terms of like the technical skills, but in terms of also, um, the, the soft skills that goes behind that. So yeah, just in terms of like the journey of how I got into tech, I think that kind of like summarizes it in a nutshell. Of course, there's been some twists and turns along the way. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's about it. Very cool. And uh, in, in terms of the day-to-day -day life versus now you're working on uh, software all day versus working on, um, working on beats and uh, performing um, with the musician life, what's the difference like between uh, the tech life and the musician life? Yes, I mean, if I may, maybe it, it's, it, I'm better off to start with like the similarities before going into yeah. the differences. <laughs> um, so like, one thing I find similar is like, like the blockages. So as a, as a musician, uh, I think I have my WhatsApp in the background. I hope you didn't hear that. But um, <laughs> anyway, pardon me. Uh, so that's all right. Uh, in terms of like similarities, um, you know, sometimes as a musician or as someone who's a songwriter, you get like creative blockages. Um, and you need to just take a walk or sleep it out. Same thing with code. You just like have no idea. So or for me, anyway, I'll speak for myself. Um, you have no idea what's going on and you just need to, to take a breather and just walk away and then come back. And then sometimes when you go sleep it out, you see code uh, in your dreams, right? I don't know if you've ever experienced that. 
uh, and that used to happen maybe to my me. nightmares not my dreams right well <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and that happens to me as well as a musician like sometimes I, I I just can't figure out that line for you know to make that song complete and um I see the lyrics in my dreams and I just have to wake up and like document it um another another similarity is like you know refactoring that there's always this emphasis on like writing beautiful code you write the first iteration of your code and then you go back to refactor it same thing with songwriting as well like sometimes you have to like refactor the lyrics uh so to speak to like have a clearer impact or a different type of impact or, or say something in a better way so um most artists will tell you like your art is never really done even if it's done right mm -hmm. um so I think in terms of like similarities, that would be that. And then um, from, from, from my understanding of tech, at least anyway, like users, they see, you know, tech as more utilitarian, um, at least at a top level of the consciousness, whereas music is much more of, a, a, of an emotional experience to journey. So like this is talking about like the differences. Um, and like both are fun, but like music life is more communal, you know, so you're, you're working in some instances with other artists and then interacting with fans, either online or in person or at shows. And like the euphoria and, and power that comes with being in front of like, you know, five people or 10 or 100 or thousands of people and just like connecting with them uh, at a raw level or having them share something with you that you created um, mm. can't really be described like unless you've been in that position. But with that said, like tech is also creative, right? So, you know, but the feeling that I explained earlier in, in this particular instance as a programmer, I'm finding that that feeling is something that you largely have to create by yourself for yourself. Yeah. Uh, even if you're working on a product that serves millions, um, you know, like the emotional connection for users with an app itself, for example, is an afterthought. Right. And, and, you know, your app is simply a means to an end to solve a particular problem or satisfy a need. Um, but there's also a different kind of joy in that, too, because in that case, like your creativity can potentially um, enable people or businesses to like maximize their potential. And that's one of the greatest things I like about tech, uh, mm -hmm. in, in addition to its like potential for scale, both in terms of like usage and commercial value as well. Uh, so to sum it up. I think like the 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 musician is kind of a song hero, pun intended. Yeah. And <laughs> and and the developer is an unsung hero, but nevertheless both are heroes and you know, I'm fortunate that I get to be both, like one person being Black Panther and Iron Man at the same time. <laughs> I like I like that analogy. Where, where's the uh, just out of curiosity, what's the like coolest show that you did as a musician? The coolest show? Uh, whoa. Um, I, yeah, I've, yeah, I've done some really cool shows to be honest with you, but I, the, there's one in particular that stands out to me. I, I, I was, um, it was a support show for, I think it was Nelly or Mo oh, cool. Def or someone. I can't remember. Like, but it was quite a big show, thousands of people in mm. the crowd and, I remember like catching myself um, at one of the instances, like during one of the, the songs I was performing and um, I, I had like an out of body experience where I saw people in the crowd. This was like even earlier in the day. Right. And I saw people in the crowd singing along to my songs, like lyrics to my songs. And um, I had like a quick flashback to like when I wrote the song, I was in I think I was in the shower. I was in a very mundane situation when I wrote the song, right? And I caught myself like in an out of body experience saying to myself, <laughs> whoa, like people are singing along to something that you wrote while you were taking a shower or when you were doing something <laughs> silly. And, <laughs> um, yeah, like that was, you know, one of my favorite moments that I cherish the most uh, from being a musician. Um, so I, I don't know if that answers the question, uh, you know, specifically, but yeah, for me, that was like definitely one of my standout moments, but yeah, I, I've been fortunate to like really enjoy many different, um, uh, uh, types of scenarios and different types of shows. Also being in like a foreign country where you have yeah. people like vibing, they don't understand 
like you know english for example which like all my songs are written in but they understand the vibe and they connect yeah. with the vibe and and you know they come to you after the show uh and you know they they just yeah want to connect with you um i've also had like i remember uh, uh quite a lot a very long time ago like some guy random guy from on the internet from iraq or syria one of those two countries and wrote to me in like pigeon like in, in broken english uh mm. saying oh you know your song really helped me in this particular uh, moment in my life or something, you know, along those lines. And, um, yeah, for someone again, who did not really fully grasp, uh, everything that I was saying in the song to like be inspired or be connected to, to what I was saying. Um, those kind of moments makes my decision to like go into that world, uh, worth it, like to follow my, my passion and follow my dreams. Nice. That sounds, uh, that sounds really awesome. Really cool. Mm -hmm. And, um, you're, you're in the process now where you're uh, still learning a lot of new things. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting themes from this podcast is that you're very much someone who is, um, uh, you know, you're, you're getting to the point where you're looking to get your first job at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what tips can you give people that are maybe a few months behind you in the cycle where they're getting to the point where they're starting to build things, but they, they're not quite getting it. Maybe they're stuck doing tutorials a little bit. What, what advice would you give them? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe not so much of an advice, but more so shedding some light uh, in terms of like what I've been through. Um, and maybe people can relate to that. Uh, but maybe firstly, it's important to like mention that I've always enjoyed learning um, right from uh, childhood. Uh, but learning how to program, I have to say, um, forced me to like rewire my brain. Um, as it's like programming, as you probably know, it's mostly about pattern recognition, right? Um, and there's just a sheer amount of things to learn and like things are always changing in tech as well. Um, but yeah, some of the things I would recommend or suggest is uh, firstly, uh, you know, you're learning a lot and it's important to like set time aside to do nothing and like bask in your tiredness when you're tired, right? Um, like the guilt that surrounds a natural phenomenon like tiredness is useless and counterproductive in my opinion. Um, also like take time to uh, enjoy doing non-tech related stuff, you know, like family, hobbies, whatever it is that you like uh, doing. And I will go into that a little bit more shortly, but also I, I personally don't worship this idea that you have to be obsessed, you know, like live, eat and breed code. Um, it's a good marketing slogan, but it's also a great way to like burn out and go to an early grave. hundred percent. And and that applies to any endeavor in life. So like find balance, you know, show up, uh, have passion, put in the work, but don't kill your own spirit while you're at it. Um, mm. and then more code specific, I, I would say like, try to find parallel with what you're learning and like the mundane stuff in everyday life. Um, like for me, it helps to, to, it helped me to solidify my learning, almost like how analogies makes things clearer when you're giving an example to someone, right? Because, you know, for someone who's trying to like learn how to code, we, we get caught up in this world of, whoa, this is something so technical. By the end of the day, some people would agree or disagree with me, especially like the purists. But my opinion is that, you know, coding is a means to an end. And what I mean by that is you are trying to solve a problem and coding or code is rather a tool to get to that end. Right. So yeah, don't get caught up in like, Oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm you know, the, you know, the C sharp guru or the JavaScript maestro or the uh, Python sensei or whatever it is like, firstly, figure out where you're trying to go, like what problem you're trying to solve, like, you know, and then work your way back to the technical side of things. So be human first before you 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 are um, a technical uh, before you become a technical robot, so to speak. So don't lose your humanness, if that makes sense, mm. right? Yeah, I, I totally agree, and I think. Uh, a lot of the developers, um, particularly ones that maybe come from that, and this isn't a knock on them, but particularly mm -hmm. people who maybe have come from the comp side background, it's all they've done all the way through. Like people mm -hmm. like me and you have worked on the commercial side before. And I think sometimes we do forget 
uh, the, uh, to take, to look at the wider picture and think mm-hmm. about why we're solving the problems we're solving and look at it with the com- with your commercial set of eyes almost. Yeah, um, I think it's a healthy thing to do and just understand, like you say, yes, it is a means to an end. There's always something new to work on, but mm-hmm. equally we are, uh, we are always, you have to think of a defined finishing point for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, just kind of like in addition to that, I, I would also say like one thing that really helped me, uh, was, um, always making sure that I got out of my comfort zone. I mean, it might be a little bit easier for me because yeah, I'm not, yeah, I don't know. I'm not necessarily an introvert and I'm not necessarily an extrovert. Like I'm, I'm, I'm quite comfortable around people and reaching out to people. Um, so I would say just like connect and relate with a players. And what I mean by that is people who know their shit um and those who want you to win and even if preferably those who want to win together with you um because you can learn a lot like either with from mentors or people who've had some years you know of experience already like they can teach you a lot and they could also show you things from a different angle uh than you already know of um and also like celebrate the small wins like celebrate the small wins don't get caught up in them keep your eye on the ball Uh, but celebrate the small wins and finally kind of like tying everything together, like be purposeful when learning, like what's your, why, you know, why are you doing it? And, and, and don't let any other person define that for you. Don't do it because it's cool. Kind of just figure out like, why do you want to do it? And you don't need to justify that why to anyone, but that why needs to sit right with you and then just go get it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more with that. It's you know you've got to understand why you're why you're working on something, um, what your reasoning is, and what you want to get out of it at the end. And you know if people are telling you oh it's the wrong thing, then obviously consider what they're saying, but like don't let that knock what you're doing. And mm-hmm. um, you know if you think something's right, then it's worth pursuing because even if it goes wrong, you still will have learned a hell of a lot. So, Most definitely. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. And uh, you, you've spent a lot of your career when you were doing the marketing side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, you were working in startups. And mm-hmm. how did you find that experience? And would you would you recommend it to other people? Would you do it again? Would you work in startups? Or would now that you're a coder, do you think you would gravitate more towards the larger companies? Um, uh, firstly, like my experience back then was was uh, one of my first experiences were really great, actually. Um, so like I'm, I'm, I'm a builder and doer by nature. So I w I was fortunate to be in an environment where people were similar and that was a breath of fresh air because prior to that, I'd been working in like when I was, you know, in, uh, as a teenager or something like that, I was, you know, working in retail and stuff just to make some money. And that's not to like knock on anyone working in retail, but like to be in an environment of people who wants to make things happen. Uh, you know, that was pretty cool. Um, and also like I, I worked with people who were curious and like genuinely enjoyed, uh, the process of not knowing and like working to fill those gaps instead of faking it. Um, and, and that environment made it more enjoyable to get things done and achieve sustainable results. Um, would I recommend it for people to go into? It, it really depends on your, on your, on your character and your trait. So if you are someone who likes to see things like take nothing and make it into something then it's definitely a good um opportunity uh to go into maybe if you're just starting off in your career like whatever your career is perhaps maybe you shouldn't uh because you know perhaps like the focus more should be about learning um and startups, even though you can learn, it's not necessarily like concentrated learning because the nature of startups are, you know, y- y- you might be required to do many different things at the same time, right? So if you want to learn a lot, like accelerated learning, yeah, then maybe go to a bigger company. But if you want to contribute a lot in terms of, you know, the output of stuff and just like, yeah, you, you you know you you are entrepreneurial minded. Yeah, then definitely go for it. Uh, but but some of the things I would say is don't do it because it's sexy to like work in a startup. <laughs> um, you know, like do it because you get to be surrounded by other creators and like visionaries who believe in an idea and 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 are willing to like put in the work to like execute and succeed or fail while trying their best. 
um, like there's a great balance of excitement and, and, and soberness that comes with contributing and being in the midst of all of that. Um, like my first taste of startup was when I just finished my degree, um, my bachelor's and yeah, I'm, I'm someone who gets excited by ideas. I'm someone who gets excited by not necessarily changing the world, but just leaving a mark on the world, like just, you know, fulfilling potential. Like that's my thing. Right. Um, so yeah, don't, don't do it because it's sexy. Do it because you, you can do stuff and like, you can see the impact of what you do. Um, and then in terms of like where I am right now, like, would I go into a startup again? Um, yeah, most definitely I would. I mean, the, the, the greatest asset I feel is like that we have as, as people is like time, creativity, passion, togetherness and will. Um, and the right startups devoid of like dysfunctional ego embodies that. So if it's an env environment that comes close to that and where I have significant ownership or equity in the business, then I'll do it again. Um, but as someone who's like a relatively new programmer, uh, a software developer, um, I would much prefer right now uh, to be in an environment where there are more people who knows more than I do so that I can just like soak up uh, the minds and just soak up the learning. Um, so perhaps for me right now at this stage, maybe I don't want to knock it off, but perhaps I'm better off in a different type of uh, environment than like a startup startup, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it can, it can be tough to manage a startup. And the thing is, like, it's very glorified. And I actually did a TikTok on this a couple of days ago and mm -hmm. just explaining that. And I think it was particularly important on that platform as well, because it's a lot of young people that are listening. And it's like, startups are so glamorized. Basically, ever since the social network came out, everyone has wanted to work in a startup. And yeah. it's not, it's great. And it's really exciting. You learn a ton, but you deal with the office politics are 10 times worse, first mm -hmm. off. And uh, se second off as well, like it's just chaotic and it's very stressful. And um, if you pick yeah. a bad one, if you pick a great one, then you'll learn a ton. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's it's not an easy decision to make. A lot of people think, oh yeah, just go for the startup when it's not that clear cut, but it's definitely worth doing. I would encourage yeah everyone do it at least once in your career and see if it's for you yeah yeah i, I agree with you like i, I feel like uh, you know for me um you know just coming out of college then i had less uh yeah maybe like less responsibilities so to speak so i was mm -hmm. in, a, in a better position to be more risky but then like risk is something that's quite synonymous with my character in a way um but yeah, definitely. Like it's something people should try out once. But if you're gonna go for it, what one thing I would say is that you have to study the game. You have to like study the company. You have to like study the people involved in the company, and you have to genuinely believe in the people involved with the startup, especially like the the, the founders, um, and 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 believe in what the startup is doing as well. Uh, otherwise, there's no point because like businesses may succeed or fail for many reasons that's beyond our control right but like great minds will always be great minds and great experiences mm -hmm. will always be great experiences right and you can't have those two if you don't genuinely enjoy and believe <laughs> in the people that you're because it's it's like being in the trenches right mm, it so, really is <laughs> yeah it's like being in the trenches and for me personally i i don't have the time to uh be in a situation like playing politics or playing passerby in an environment like if if, if i'm coming there then you know we're going we're, we're going in, in killer mode together like we, we we have to be hunters together and that means me the founders and whoever else is working there but if if, if that's not there if i'm going to be a yes man in an environment where you know the risks are very high and the chances of failure are quite high Then it's not really worth it. If you want to play politics, then go to the bigger company. At least, you know, you can mm. get something out of it if you play your politics right. But if you're yeah. in a startup <laughs> and you're playing politics, wasting time, wasting life, playing politics, and then you end up failing anyway, or the, the, the likelihood of you failing is quite high, then, you know, what, what are you doing with yourself? Mm, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And in terms of coding, mm -hmm. you've learned to code uh, over the past couple of years, as, as we discussed. Mm -hmm. What would you change about your methodology uh, if you could 
have a time machine and go back to that day when you wrote that first line of Python, what, what would you change? Yeah, what would I change? Yeah, maybe initially at the start, like less focus on the language or the tech stack and more focus mm. on what was it that I was trying to do. And like, like, like I said before, like not get caught up in the whole hype of, oh, this is what a programmer does. He, he understands this 27 million languages and that everything is magic. It's not, you know, just be more human, like think clearly and just be more human. I would have embraced, I did embrace it a little bit, but I would have made it more of a focus uh, at the beginning. Um, secondly, I would say like, this is more internally, like, but to come to grips sooner that there are no shortcuts, right? Um, like academically speaking, I, I you know, I, 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 I'm used to like being in the top five, top, top 10% of, of, you know, whatever class that I find myself in, like schooling wise. Right. Um, but what I found is like learning how to code is, it's a totally different experience to like learning academically. Um, and like just the hours that you're going to spend debugging and being frustrated and like encountering and eventually overcoming problems with your code, it's also time spent well. And it's, 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 it's time that you have to spend. And it's just as important as actually having a clean working code. So uh, to, to, in a nutshell, to summarize my point is just come to grip sooner that there are no shortcuts. It's, it's going to be a long <laughs> road. And, uh, you know, get your, uh, your, your water bottle, your flask, and your thick socks, <laughs> and just get ready to hike. <laughs> get ready to hike and don't shy away from it don't shy away from yeah. from from the from the rubbles yeah i couldn't have said it better myself really uh you know you've got to be afraid to uh can't be afraid to get stuck in a little bit and mm -hmm. i think I, I like the uh i think quincy larson who founded free code camp had this really uh really important tweet where it was uh, i think he said you know if people spent so much time looking for that ma they they spend so much time looking for that magic bullet of how to learn everything that if they'd spent that time actually learning it then they wouldn't need it like the amount of time people put put into it thinking about the shortcut and actually you know there's just something to be said for just sticking your head in a book or you know or, uh, or a coding portal like there's something to be said just for that really uh and people worry a lot yeah. I mean, sometimes I find myself now like question, like, because uh, sometimes I go to the local Starbucks to like work on code just to like get out of the house and stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes I find myself questioning myself. Am I a maniac? Because I'm starting <laughs> to like enjoy the process of, you know, having code not working and like falling mm -hmm. down the rabbit hole of like, say, Stack Overflow or, you know, whatever it might be. And just like spending hours to only find out that I'm missing a comma, um, <laughs> <laughs> but but there's something comical about that as well. Like you get to laugh yeah. at yourself. So um, yeah, don't take it too serious. Yeah, hundred percent. Don't take it too seriously. Like you got to relax a little bit. Like it's not that deep when you're learning. Like you know you can um, yeah just uh, in, enjoy yourself and enjoy the process because it is fun. And if you keep it fun, then it won't feel like work, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Cool. So I think that kind of covers uh, covers most of the areas that um, we're looking to there. But did you have anything uh, you want to shout out that you're like working on or anything to promote um, at the moment? Um, not so much of a promotion, but like I just wanted to say, I, I kind of missed out earlier on on uh, when we're talking about my journey of coding, so to speak. Mm. So like my focus right now is just to like continue to learn, you know. Mm. Um, and just like enjoy the process of learning. Um, and my aim is to be involved with like a product focused team who is solving like yeah. some interesting, complex, and if possible, like fun problems, right? Uh, and while it all makes great business sense, like let's make money and grow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but two of my favorite products actually are like Spotify in terms of what I enjoy using the most every day. That's mm. my favorite um, app. And Stripe as well. I, I don't know if you know of Stripe. Mm. Yeah, I know Stripe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like the scale and level of complexities of the problem they solve, and it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting. So, if anyone from either companies are listening to this, uh, here's me quoting you uh, <laughs> for a meeting 
or an internship, you know, would, I would love the opportunity to be involved with those products from the engineering side. Um, so shout out uh, Spotify, shout out Stripe. Um, yeah. And shout out uh, School of Code, shout out, uh, uh, you know, people in my personal life as well who's helped me on my journey. Um, and also my mentor, um, Stuart um, Davis, who's just been really great with his time. And I would recommend a lot of people here, if possible, uh, do give their time uh, to people who are trying to break into the industry as well. Um, Definitely. It's, it's a really yeah. good, great cause. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, if we can help people get into the industry, we can boost the tech economy and great things will happen. So absolutely. And uh, uh, yeah, once again, if anyone at uh, Spotify or uh, or Stripe are listening, then give Shola a call. Uh, absolutely, it. they yeah. should. <laughs> yeah, so- and what's the best way to get in touch with you? Is it LinkedIn or? Yeah, uh, LinkedIn or e- am, am I allowed to drop email on this? Or- yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, LinkedIn, Shola Quadri. Or email shola q dev at gmail.com. So that's S H O L A Q D E V at gmail.com. Cool. That that sounds great. And you're looking for something in the new year, right? In terms of like a new opportunity? Yeah, 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 yeah. In the new year. Right now we're waiting on Santa Claus. Uh, <laughs> you know, we have to we have to to to, to you know welcome his full eminent presence. So <laughs> December is for that. And then in the new year, we get cracking. And judging by the podcast schedule, this may actually drop in the first week of January. So when I say new year, just for total clarity, I mean like now, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, in exactly. 20, yeah, not in 2023. Not 2023, yeah. <laughs> not 2024. I know some countries uh, in like Saudi Arabia or something like that, they in the 14th or 15th century, like their calendar, <laughs> uh, Ethiopia as well. So we don't mean you know, in the 1400s or the 1500s, 2022 to be specific. <laughs> yeah, we should give him a JavaScript date object or like epoch time or something just to be absolutely sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Seisho. You've been right. an awesome guest and it's been really interesting to hear, to hear about your experiences. Thanks for the invitation. Really enjoyed it. Cool. And uh, thank you as well, listener, for tuning in once again for this week's episode of The Coder Career. I've been Cameron Blackwood, and I hope you have a great week. Happy coding. Happy coding.